Hello, this is R-I-C-K-Y, the YouTube Tech Guy. Hey guys, so today I'm gonna to be showing you the first things you need to do as soon as you get the Galaxy S10. There are 30 of them and you can do it to the S10, S10 Plus or S10e, doesn't matter which one you have. And this will make your phone so much better than it comes out of the box. So one time you have to go through it all, but after that your phone will be so much better, you'll enjoy it and make sure to subscribe to check out our how to set up your camera to get much better photo and video quality that will be posted tomorrow. All right, let's get to it. So for the Galaxy S10, the first thing you wanna do, this is especially important for iPhone users, is create a Samsung account. Now you might be, why do you need one? I already have a Google account. Well, you want it just so you can do something which is akin to AirDrop, which is sharing large files over text message, over email, whatever you want. You can share a 4K video with this and you can transfer it to whatever you want. You have it all right here. So you need a Samsung account in order to do that. So once you have it, that's how you share large files by using link share. Second thing you're gonna to wanna to get rid of is the whole Bigsby Home thing. So you're gonna to want to go ahead and pinch to zoom and get rid of Bigsby Home. This will make your home screen experience a lot better and honestly, Bigsby Home isn't that good. It's probably the weakest part of Bigsby. Then you're gonna to want to go into settings. So from settings, you're gonna to wanna to do a couple of different things. First, starting off with connections. You're gonna to wanna to turn on phone visibility. The reason you want this on is because when you want to do something such as Wi-Fi Direct, which is another way of airdrop, we will do a whole airdrop on your S10 video just to kind of show you guys all the different ways. You need to have phone visibility on. So just turn that on and it will be a lot better experience for you to share files between friends and family. All right, then you have sounds and vibrations. From here, you're gonna to want to go to advanced and go to sound quality and effects and turn on Dolby Atmos. Now you can turn it on from the top as well, but again, this is, we're just going through all the settings. I leave it on automatic, but if you do happen to listen to movies or music most, you can just uh, do whichever one is best suited for you. Then I would take a second to plug in some headphones and also tune, tune adapt sound on. I have done this myself. The sound quality is much better. It basically takes a profile of your ears, does a really good job of it, and it's just a much better sound quality overall for all of your headphone needs thereafter. Then we're going to go into display, and this is a big one because you definitely want to change a lot of things. First and foremost, we have to skip right to it, night mode. Just turn that on. This makes everything a black background, which if you didn't know on Samsung phones, saves you a lot of battery life. So definitely turn that on because that will dramatically improve your battery life. Next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go to blue light filter and schedule a time when the blue light filter will turn on. I also recommend kind of toning it down a little bit too, because sometimes it can be really yellowish. So I like to tone it down a little bit more but it's a really good way to always have it at night so you can go to sleep more easily, or you can always get a pair of gunner glasses, which I love too. Next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is, in the US specifically, all screen modes are natural. You're gonna to wanna to turn that to vivid because we buy Samsung phones. We're not tech YouTubers. They want natural and realistic colors. No, we want vivid colors like everyone else that just wants a great looking screen. So turn the vivid colors on and it will be a much richer experience. Then you're gonna to wanna to scroll down and go into home screen. From your home screen section, you can do a couple of different things. I do wanna point out some of the big ones though. You can lock your home screen. So if you're a person like a lot of my family that happens to move around uh, icons on accident, locking the home screen will make it so they can't do that. So that's a really important one. Then you have quick open uh, notification panel. What this does is when you swipe down on your home screen, you will uh, pull down the notification panel. That's just really simple and easy and definitely something that's quite useful. So I would leave that one on. And then I would have it so you can rotate to landscape uh, on pretty much any screen, especially the home screen. Also, for those of you who need to hide apps, there you go. Then we're going to go to navigation bar. So for navigation bar, there are a couple different ways you can do right here. The thing that I really like is I do like the full screen gestures, especially if you're a split screen user, this gives you a lot more real estate than the old fashioned buttons do. Now, the cool thing is, is at the top, you can always quickly turn this on and off just by right here. So you can just turn it on have it again or turn it off and get rid of it. So I do love that ability just to quickly toggle it on or off. It's very simple and easy. 
You can also change your button layout. I like the rest of Android because I use so many different phones. I always do back, home, and recent, uh, but you can go the Samsung route, which is the one above it. Then from there, we're going to go to two very important things. So as you know, I do recommend getting a screen protector. You do have one that comes with it, and yet this isn't done automatically. What the heck is wrong with you, Samsung? But if you do want to get a glass screen protector, Whitestone Dome Glass, they aren't a sponsor, but I'm a really big fan of theirs. And it's definitely something that I'm about to put on my phone tonight. So before you do that though, you want to do touchscreen sensitivity on. This is really important because even my fingerprint did not scan that well without this on when I had this built-in screen protector on. I feel like a lot of people are complaining about the fingerprint scanner, and if you didn't have that on, that is why. So yeah, that'll improve your fingerprint scan a lot. Then you also want to turn on accidental presses. This really is a big thing for me, and I wish every phone would have it. It's just a really great sensor that's at the top, and basically it just makes sure that it's not going off in your pocket or purse. So that's a really important feature that I definitely recommend you turn on. All right, from there, we're gonna go to lock screen. And on lock screen, there's two things you should really take a look at. And the first thing is smart lock. Smart lock is really important, basically. You can go into this and set up that you do not need your lock screen, say, when you're connected to your car. That's a really good thing. So any kind of Bluetooth device, you don't want to need a lock screen when it's connected to it. That is a really good one to go with. Another good one is maybe at home. Maybe at home you don't have anything you need to hide. Then you can go ahead and turn that on. So for me, I definitely always have it when I'm at home. I do not need my lock screen unless I'm doing a video. And then we finally have always on display. Now this is a really great feature and they've added some really good improvements to it this year. First and foremost, you can actually do it so that it's uh, at a certain time. So I have it at a schedule for a time. You can always have it on, although that does drain a little bit more of your battery life on the daily. So just know that. And then uh, tap to show. So you have to tap it in order for it to have it on. The other thing you can do is have it on a uh, portrait or orientation. So you can have it change to landscape, which I kind of find really great, especially for a clock at night. I really like that style kind of thing. So it's just a really nice uh, way and you can mess around with all the different ones for it as well. So yeah, just simple and easy to do. Then you also have clock styles with it too. So you can play around with that and change it as much as you like. I like having an animated GIF, so it kind of moves. All right, then from there, we're going to go to the biometrics and security. From here, you're gonna to want to do one thing in particular, and that is for Find My Mobile. Now, for Find My Mobile, there's a lot of different things you can do, but the biggest thing I would say you wanna do is allow yourself to remote unlock it and send last location. Now, again, this does require a Samsung account, but if you do have one, then you can always log on to your phone and unlock it remotely if you forgot your password or PIN. You have to have your original email password, so just know that, and send your last location in case you lose it. But this also allows you to remotely wipe it as well. From there, we also want to get into secure folder. Secure folder is a basic setup where you literally have essentially two phones. So you have your personal side or your work side. The really cool thing about the secure folder is you can even set up your own different fingerprint for it. So say if you have this fingerprint for your secure folder, you can make this fingerprint for your secure folder. So it's, it's a really interesting way of kind of locking everything up so you don't want people to see certain photos, videos, certain whatever you don't want them to see you have a completely separate folder. You can even ins install different apps in it. And it's really good for businesses or bring your own device uh, people as well, because that way, if you want, your job can only be on the secure folder side, so they cannot see any of your personal files. And that's a really great and important feature, I would say. Then from there, you're gonna want to go to location. Under location, you're gonna to want to go to improve accuracy and make sure Bluetooth scanning is off. Bluetooth scanning is normally on by default, and that means that Bluetooth is always on. Even if you have it off at the top, it is still actually on, which is just stupid. So yeah, always have that off. Now we're going to go to possibly the biggest one, which is advanced features. So under advanced features, you're going to want to go and start off with the Bigsby key. Now, the Bigsby key can be remapped. I have set up a special one, which I will show you guys how to do later, but 
you can actually map it to actually open up the assistant, but you can automatically open whatever app you want to, or I will show in a separate video how to do the Google Assistant. All right, then from there, you're going to want to go right here and reduce animations. This will make your phone faster. And there's even a more hidden one, which we'll get to in our how to save battery life uh, one, but you can't even do better than this. So just know that for a future video. All right, then we also want to go to motions and gestures. So there's a lot of things you can kind of change around here. I definitely would recommend having double tap to wake up. I would recommend turning these two off because they're using sensors that just annoy most people. So I would actually turn both of them off. If you want to see how any of these work, just tap it and you can see exactly how it works. But most people hate smart alert particularly. One-handed mode. So one-handed mode is simple and easy. Basically you just swipe up from the corner and then you're gonna be able to have the entire phone be used one-handed. That's a really great feature and definitely one that I recommend always holding on to. And then we're gonna go back and turn on Video Enhancer. Video Enhancer will basically give you kind of an HDR effect for all of your video watching needs. So these are the apps that I have that are currently supported, but there are many more. And if you download them, they'll be added to here if it is supported. So from there, we're going to go to device care. And device care is really important because this one, we will go more in depth on this, how to save battery life, but there are things you can do to really improve your battery life in this section. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is the top two right here, auto optimize, make sure that is on. And whatever time you're not using the phone, so basically it will do, what the optimization thing is at one point every night. So this is just a simple, quick and easy way to do it so that your phone is running faster. The other thing you wanna do is auto restart. This is a very important feature. So your phone should actually be turned off once a week. How many of you are guilty of never doing that? Okay, well, this will help your battery life a lot and it helps just your overall speed of your phone. It'll do it automatically as long as you're not using the phone and as long as it's over 30%, it will restart itself and that's simple and easy, really great to always have your phone at top speed. Then you're gonna want to go to battery. And from battery, you're gonna want to fine tune your smartphone. And you do this by going ahead and the three dots on battery and under settings, you go to sleeping apps. Sleeping apps is basically all the apps you do not need to run the back. A perfect example of this I would say is something like a banking app or a game that you do not want to run the background. These are apps that I would always put an ad sleeping. So you can just add whatever app you want. And since I have about 300 plus, I will be going through that immensely as I do on all my phones. It's a really big feature that you definitely want to do. And it will again, help you improve your battery life. All right, so for our next feature, we're going to go into general management. And from here, we're going to go to language and input. And this is if you use the Samsung keyboard, the stock keyboard that comes with it. Personally, I do prefer Swift key and we'll go through that in a must have apps video. If you use the Samsung keyboard, there's two things that I would really recommend doing. And that is smart typing and shortcut. So text shortcuts basically allow you to press one letter and it will auto fill an entire word automatically automatically every time you type in that letter. So you can put, you know, I, and then I love you. So it can be an entire phrase or, you know, an entire thing like an address or something like that. So basically if I type I, it will automatically, if I type in I, it'll automatically suggest I love you. If I press U, it will automatically suggest my email address. So it's really simple, quick and easy, but I just love how you can autofill things. I really recommend doing this for some things such as your address, your phone number, your email address, whatever things you always have to type in, it's really simple, quick, and easy to do. So then we have two last ones, I promise, and that will be it. So first you're gonna want to go to your phone, hit these little three dots, and go into setting. From here you're gonna want to turn on quick decline messages and just make it your own. I have set up mine for a long time, I've had different jobs, and these have always worked out pretty well. So whatever you want to put in there, you know, whether you're with a customer, you're with a client, whatever you have, it's just a really quick and simple way to kind of customize your messages, and it's gonna make your decline calls a lot better. Finally, we have the gaming launcher. So the gaming launcher is a place that optimizes all your games so that they play better and they work a lot uh, more efficient. You can also do things like decline, uh, auto decline any notifications or change them. So I recommend kind of looking into that more if you are a big gamer. But for all of you that have games on your phone, to make it a lot cleaner, 
just hit these three dots right here, go into settings, and then turn on hide games and home app. What this does is that basically you just have the game launcher in your home screen and in your app drawer, and you don't have it, all your games taking up space and kind of making a big clutter everywhere else. It's just your game launcher and that's where all of your games reside. All right, guys. Well, hopefully you did like this video. If you did, please give a like thumbs up down below. Again, make sure to check out our how to save battery life and speed up your phone, which we still have a couple ways of doing that outside of this. And finally, check out our how to improve your photo and video quality on this phone. For our review, we will show you how to get this amazing lock screen wallpaper that all of you guys have been asking me for for years. So I will finally make it available at the review. Thank you as always for watching. This has been R-I-C-K-Y, the YouTube tech guy. Thank you for watching our video. If you liked it, why don't you go ahead and subscribe up there. Make sure you follow us on social media right here. And of course, check out our latest video up there. And right down here, you're gonna find the perfect video for you. Or at least that's what YouTube tells me. Thanks again.